Hey everybody, thanks again for joining us at ConCon's Cantina. This week, you already know, Chapter 5, Gunslinger. Major spoilers ahead, so if you haven't watched the episode, pause it, come back to the podcast. You can join the conversation at Instagram, ConCon's Cantina, Facebook.com slash ConCon's Cantina, and YouTube slash ConCon's Cantina. Are you a local brand or brewery, or do you have an item that you want to sell and you want us to sponsor you? Go ahead, shoot us an email, conconscantina at gmail.com, K-O-N-K-O-N-S, Cantina. If you enjoy the show, please leave us a review. It really helps boost the recommendation of this podcast to other people. This episode was pretty special, guys, so if you're just interested in getting into the Mandalorian recap, please see the show notes for the timestamp so that you can skip ahead. With that being said, Chapter 5, Gunslinger. Bounty hunting is a complicated profession. Don't you agree? You already know what it's up, guys. I am Con Con. And to my... We're switching it up this week. We're, we're sitting in different places. Uh... To my immediate left is our media, our PR guru, our our guru. He goes by many of names. We'll see what names he goes by this week. It's Justin Baker. Get at me. <laughs> Battle Box. Sunday nights. <laughs> Directly across from me, the tallest man in the room and usually other rooms around. He is as tall as Peter Mayhew. Not really. That is rip. Uh, no, that was bad. Uh, <laughs> Russell Moment. Allen, magistrate. Hey, yo. Moment of silence for Peter Mayhew. All right. All right. Yeah, All right yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I can't uh, believe you guys did that. Black makeup and everything. Uh, and then a new guest on our podcast, our our producer. Well, we, we try to make him our producer. He has the most experience. He went to school for audio. Yeah. Yeah. And and it, go, introduce yourself. My name is Miguel. Uh, I go by Miggy Piggy just because I came up with it in middle school and I tried changing it. But, I mean. That's how the best there was names a lot, there, came up There was with. a huge riot, so. Because you back. tried to change it's the Miggy name, Piggy. Right? Yeah. On okay. Steam, I go by Fluff. Uh, that's not any better of a story. <laughs> it was computer generated. Everybody started go- calling me Fluff, and so Best I just story. I just stuck with it. So kind of like Gabriel Miguel Iglesias. Before I really got to know you, he said Miguel Connor. Iglesias. <laughs> <laughs> before I got to know you, and I would always see Connor say things about Miggy, and then I would see Miggy Piggy. I thought you were a very big fan of Miss Piggy. <laughs> From the Muppets? <laughs> no, it's not that. That actually <laughs> calls to mind. That could be... I remember seeing an interview with George Lucas, actually, today on YouTube. Jumping right into the Star Wars. Uh, I, yeah, I'm sorry. I have to say it. So, part of the allure and mystery of Yoda was George Lucas, on purpose, didn't have a species, didn't know where he came from. Every other species in Star Wars is explained, but for some reason, Yoda... He just wanted to keep it a mystery. So he actually joked about it in an interview and said, Miss Piggy and Kermit the Frog gave birth to Yoda. I do. I, yeah, I, I remember something about that. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought that was pretty funny. Well, guys, as you already know, we are a Cantina podcast. So we're going to strap up our boots, get in our spaceships. And we're going to head straight into the Cantina. Welcome to Con Con's Cantina. What are you having? But remember, no droids. This week, I am drinking Castmates Stout Edition. Mm. This is Jameson. It is an Irish whiskey. Um, you know, I got it on sale. It's, you know, it used to be my favorite. I've it's gotten good. into, yeah, I've gotten into better bourbons, I could say. Uh, Which Castmates do you prefer? We well, got the IPA, we got me, the stout, which, is, which Phil, is your... we're actually talking about... I, if I had to choose, like, if I'm going to go for Castmates, I would rather just drink Black Barrel mm-hmm. over drinking the Castmates, but, you know, the Phil Castmates agrees. are good. Um, Phil agree. Yeah, I, Phil definitely agrees. Um, I We have another guest, uh, by the way. He doesn't have a mic, though. Phil is, is joining us this week. He's listening in on the podcast. Scream into the background, Phil. Scream! Yeah! Oh, that that spiked the <laughs> mic. So that's okay. Uh, so yeah, we were just talking at yeah. I prefer Black Barrel, but you know I'm drinking the uh, Castmate Stout, which is good. Um, I think I like the IPA better. But Justin, what are you drinking? I am drinking a uh, Sweetwater. 
variety pack. Again, a variety pack two weeks in a row. But this has one of my favorite beers. It is the uh, Sweetwater Mango T- Mango Kush 420 strain. And it is amazing. And this is a perfect time to bring this up. Local breweries, we want you guys. Okay? We want to, we want to rate your beers. We want to talk about it. We want to tell people about what you're offering the public. You know, micro brews are, are huge right now. We also so, want free beer. So true. It's true. Listen, <laughs> hey, you know, we got some listeners, okay? We got people at home. Hopefully they're joining us. Central Florida is one of the uh, biggest microbrewery, craft distillery uh, areas in the southeast. I so believe it. Yeah. We need to take advantage of that and talk about some delicious places that we can visit in person and our visitors or our listeners can go hit up. I mean, we're not, you know, Portland, Oregon, but we're close. We're catching up. We're catching up. Nothing, Russell. nothing like a good pint of spotchka. It's good to hear your voice. A flagon. What? A flagon. I'm sorry. What are you it drinking? It comes in pints? I'm getting one. I am drinking Deanston 12 Year Single Malt Whiskey from the Highlands. Mm. It uh, wafts into the nose with an initial wave of slightly smoky, salty sea mist with a <laughs> subtle foundation well, I of vanilla. I thought you were about to say something else entirely. <laughs> yeah. That, that, <laughs> anyway, it's fantastic. Uh, highly recommend it. It's a 12 year even though technically, if I looked it up, and it's actually a 14-year, but they only put 12 on there. It's certified organic, actually, in the entire process. They actually said from start to finish, it's certified organic with organic food foundation seal of approval. So it's actually very good and good for you. Do you remember the price point? It's the way I like my alcohol. I don't. It was brought over by my good friend Dusty Delbridge. Oh, shout-outs to Dusty. Don't care, Miguel. <laughs> Dusty deserves a shout-out. Shout Ooh, unless okay. you're paying us. All right. But yes, it was probably not cheap. Dusty, uh, your house is coming along fantastic. I'm his, following all the progress on Instagram. His VW is amazing. It is. He has a VW bug. I'm super jealous. It's a project I've always wanted to do. Haven't done. Open wheel, hot ladies, rod style. Ladies, Dusty is available. Okay. <laughs> if you think Wreck-It Ralph is attractive, this is a better looking version with a cooler car. And what's hilarious is he actually came to a costume party As dressed. Wreck-It Wreck-It he did. Ralph. Okay, he did. And he, he did. was the. I think there was a costume competition that I think he actually won hands down. Of course, Melissa came too, so there was some competition. But we what won't did, talk. We'll what, talk about that another time. What did Melissa come as? To what party was I not invited? I think it was a princess of some sort. She'll have to come as a guest and explain all this. It was a long time ago. The, she has an embarrassing But story. I remember Dusty's Wreck-It Ralph more than Melissa's costume. Dude, he so he deserved number and one. Everything. She, she has an embarrassing story. And she'll be on here eventually. I don't mm. know what we're going to have her talk about. We'll Hello, think of something. Kitty. Oh, yeah. We'll think of something. And uh, her embarrassing story. And if she's listening to this. I'll make her listen to this. She knows what name I want to call her right now. And she is screaming. Melinda. Yeah. She, no, 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 no. I can, no, no. We're, we're going to save it. We're going to save it. Miguel! So I, I hopped in on Justin's uh, 420 <laughs> Sweetwater drink. So I'm drinking the 420 Extra Pale Ale. I've never had it before, but it's it's really it's good. solid. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. So kind of local they're, Georgia. Their regular you know? their regular 420 that you're drinking is is good because it's very so good. very uh, easy to find. It's not like one of those beers that you're gonna search for it. Yeah. You can get that 420 their Pale Ale in a lot of places, even on draft. Well, guys, and here it is. You know what's up next? News. So we have a ton of news to talk about this week. So much so that we have to actually cut down on news. Okay. And song parodies. I can't be singing the whole episode. I want to. All the Christina Aguilera. Just without the... She wears too much makeup. Too much makeup. Too much. With that being said, Mulan. Too far into that. We have a Mulan trailer. New Mulan trailer. I was the only one that seemed to be excited about this trailer. I was excited. Um, were you though yeah oh well i was excited uh the, the hans aren't there anymore i i you know han solo oh. yes he actually yes. wasn't there that's a fact <laughs> uh but the hans weren't there uh yeah. they have like a new villain which you mm-hmm. know we'll see how it is they they're you know they're they're trying to actually make it an original live action which was cool it seems like all the new live actions have been a shot for shot remake and this one is new like they have a new protagonist of a female witch like you know that's the alongside. I, I don't think that's antagonist. Exactly, yeah, not protagonist. Oh, did I say protagonist? Yes. Yeah, Mulan's our protagonist. Yes. I didn't think you know the witch isn't exactly you know necessary. I caught vibes of Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. 
I don't know if anybody else did. Female yeah. female protagonist. Uh, that was the first movie when I was growing up that was like a mainstream martial arts uh, movie that was not like a Jackie Chan, like comedy martial arts movie. That was like the first one shown in a the theater. That's kind of the same vibe I got from this. It was uh, vertical running up walls, definitely cable work going on. Um, I'm thinking it's going to be somewhat on that same vein, and I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, me too, Russell. Oh, yeah. No, definitely looking forward to it. Um, As far as Disney live action remakes, I feel like this one has the best shot of actually being a good movie. Not to say that Aladdin and Lion King were not. I th- many people liked it. I thought it was okay, but no, if it, it were me, I would go right back to the original animation. Mm-hmm. And with Disney Plus, it's a click away. So no Eddie Murphy though. Yeah, that's very true. It's a bad look for my guys at Disney. No Mushu. No Mushu. No Mushu. But I do think that because there was not that many animated characters, and they were mainly all people. Mm-hmm. This one could be done pretty good without feeling like you're missing that factor. Like you are like the Lion King movie is like all cats. Yeah, I liked how they subtly brought in like. The original music, and then they added this, like yeah, deep yeah, like a score. Yeah, over the, it. exactly. Yeah, so that you know, they brought in a little bit of the nostalgia there. They not that Christina though. No, definitely. Well, hey, you know, we may have some credit scenes where we got Christina. Maybe they brought Christina back. You know, the voice is kind of dying, so she needs a new gig. Miguel, I don't know. I I have this sour taste in my mouth after all these live action films, and it, it's just that the originals they're 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 timeless and they're so good and. And after the last couple of ones, you know, I'm willing to give it a shot, but I mean, I'm not sure if you guys seen the live Jungle Book one, but that I think oh, that was the worst Mowgli. one of them all. You the think Mowgli that was the one? worst one? I thought it was terrible. And so with that being said, compared, I, to, compared to what though? Are you talking the about original. the Netflix one? Okay, the original one. Everybody knows me as Mowgli, so I take it personal. That is true. You we know? did, yeah. You're a better Troy kind of started calling you Mowgli, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know who it was. I think it was but Troy. But it stuck. <laughs> <laughs> well... Does uh, we talked about this a while ago? Does anybody remember the 2000 first live action Jungle Book? Wait, I remember George I of the Jungle with Brendan Fraser. The movie there that was a, movie was amazing. Let's talk about George of the Jungle. George, 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 George of the, the Jungle. jungle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know the rest. Well, Connor searches on his computer. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to search for it, but uh, we'll, we'll. Can we talk about the live action Tarzan? Well, what I was trying to say I is like just that. That. I that was good. I didn't see. I forgot about that movie. The movie's good. Have you seen him again? We forgot about that's a ooh. I kind of I gotta see that now. Mm. Well, what I was just gonna say is I, I'm so tired of having to go into these films and then just be disappointed time after time. I always think that it's gonna be good, but I'm what just is it about the live actions that have disappointed you? I don't know. They're just not just not as good. You know what I think? Or something just I don't know. It, it just doesn't seem right for Mulan. For me personally, I don't have a nostalgic connection to that movie. Whereas Lion King, Little Mermaid, Aladdin, like there's mega nostalgia of like remembering that movie coming out and the events that they were. Mulan kind of entered into a new era, at least for me, the age that I was, that it wasn't it wasn't as memorable. Like it was still good. There were songs that you remember, but it wasn't like Little Mermaid or Aladdin yeah, style yeah, yeah. or exactly. Emperor's New Groove. Oh my God! Don't I guess I'll give it a hurt, please. I I remember Mulan. Mulan. Uh, I had it on VHS, and I remember. I'm not going to name names, but somebody borrowed my VHS, and I never got it back. That chunk hurt. You know who you are. You know who you are. <laughs> you don't listen to this podcast, probably, but <laughs> you'll hear it one day. You know who you are, uh, Miguel. What do you think? It's like nostalgia, though. Like, is it? That it's literally not a cartoon, or no, I, I, I don't, I don't know. It just doesn't seem like it has. I don't know, just something missing. I really couldn't tell you. No, let me ask you this: When you're going into the theater or popping in the Blu-ray or whatever, are you wanting to like this movie? Definitely, yeah, yeah. 100%. So you're you're going in with an open mind, and you know it's not anything about oh well, it's not the original, so man. No, no, it's not yeah. that at all. Yeah, no. so I'm the same way, Miguel. I think that. Right. You know, give us good content and we'll like it. Yep. You know, um, speaking of which, Tarzan was directed by John Favreau, right? I think it was. The live action? I don't know. I'm pretty sure it was. I'm going to solidly just say yes, 100% fact. It was directed <laughs> by on, John Favreau. Hold on, let me Favreau. look it up. No. What about, uh, what about James Bond? Has anybody seen the trailer for that? Oh, yeah. That was, that was really good. In fact, we should probably have a little round table on who's our favorite James Bond. Oh, man. Going all the way back. Miguel. Favorite James uh, Bond. I Go. forget his name. Pierce. Pierce Brosnan. Pierce Brosnan. Yeah. Golden, Golden Eye. Eye. Yeah, I grew up the classic N sixty four. If you grew up in the late nineties, you know Pierce Brosnan as James Bond. Connor. Yeah. Uh, Daniel Craig. Um, 
you know, it's kind of obvious. Uh, th- there's just something about those movies. I think he, you know, he kind he has that smoldering look the whole mm-hmm. time. Um, and I do like the Pierce Brosnan uh, movies. In fact, the Pierce Brosnan movie has my I can't remember which one it is. Excuse me, I believe it's the third one where they're surfing the in snow one. Where no, no, they're no, like they're jet skis. No, they're surfing. Remember, they're on the hydrofoils. Are you was... talking about one with Halle Berry? Yes, that's yeah, Diamond and that day, is right? the one oh, with the ice yeah. castle. Yeah, the, the ice. Yeah, <sighs> Die another day. movie called the cloaked. Die Aston. another day. Die another day. He had yeah, the cloaked yeah. BMW. Like, yeah, oh, man, that was at no, the time the that was like unheard of. Yeah, yeah, that was on the ice. Yeah. That was a that was, was spinning a, around. That was a Aston Martin too, wasn't yeah, it? That was a BMW. In was it BMW? Yeah. Well, the the intro to that sequence, he they're on hydrofoil surfboards, which elevates you out of the water. It's this big giant fin. We won't get into the physics because. I don't know him, but anyway, that was like my favorite. But still, uh, Daniel Craig, he's 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 my favorite. Justin, I'm I'm a purist. I like either Sean Connery or Roger Moore. Just Block because Roger Moore. Roger Moore is good. Don't come on, bro. get out of here. Just don't short, you can't you, compete, Sean. Don't you can't compare Sean Connery to Roger Moore, dude. Listen, <laughs> sorry, they both had tiny short short bathing suits. True. I mean, this They're was both the '60s, guys. I mean, that was the style. Movies. They're, short, short, shorts. Good looks for my. They guys. had they, short shorts up until like the late eighties. I wish I, dude. If I could wear short forward shorts forward with women, my shorts are just way too white. I my my, pa- my legs. I mean, I just I can't pull off the short shorts. Natasha wants me to wear short shorts, but no. oh, get the chubbies, man. I'm like five inch inseam or nothing. Let's go. <laughs> five inch inseam. You hit the wrong wave. You're gonna see something. <laughs> I think the reason why I asked everyone to give their opinion on who's their favorite Bond over over the decades, Timothy Dalton or nothing, was because of how many original callbacks there were in this new Bond trailer. I it thought did it a was good job. Yeah, really good. And I feel like they're doing that because they're trying to call back to the original and also because this is the last Bond movie that Daniel Craig's going to do. Right. Yeah. He that said that last time too, though. Well, that came out. He had a He's lot of old. He had a lot of controversy. A lot of Jedi mind tricks. I read some of it. I can't remember all the details. Apparently there's a family and I can't remember the name of the family that own the rights. Skywalkers. No, oh. <laughs> that own the rights. This to family. Bond messes up every galaxy right yeah (laughs) so they own the rights to bond and apparently daniel craig had some not so nice things to say kind of about the james bond franchise as a whole saying that you know he wasn't going to do any more movies and it you know it's twitter nonsense can we bring back sean connery i feel like he would make a really good bond right now can we do a batman beyond but james bond where sean connery teaches somebody how to be the new james bond oh my gosh that's an original idea it's like a zorro thing remember zorro where the original zorro taught the new zorro hey justin yes i'm not hiding my ideas in a bushel basket our viewers are asking where this bushel basket is coming from. Can it you? Is Lots of places. Episode one, a very lost in his moment Connor telling a story. Listen, at, at, at the head of every corporation, there's a guy named John, okay? And John Favreau has these ideas. <laughs> yeah, John Favreau, not Dave Filoni, which we're going to get into here oh. in a second. But yes, there's a guy. This isn't a rant podcast for It's Connor. not. We're going to have a bonus episode, Con Con's Rants. Uh <laughs> And there's this guy that just has the best ideas that kind of screw everybody, you know? Mm -hmm. And the CEO is like, oh, my God, John, that's a great idea. Don't hide your ideas in a bushel basket. That's where that comes from. From now on. Jim Gaffigan is actually where it comes from. Every episode, we have a bushel basket. Um, Like you said, Russell, the the callbacks in the trailer, the callback that I liked the most, very uh, James Bond trailer as a whole, uh, was the guns coming out of the headlights. Mm -hmm. The, The DB5. Loved that. Anything else on the on the James Bond trailer? No, just looking forward to it. Yeah, gonna see it. It's a James Bond movie. What about Black Widow? Did you guys see that? I do not care! <laughs> no. I haven't seen it, but I am going to watch it. In fact, I tried to pull it up in a previous version of this podcast, and I got yelled at. <laughs> Miguel, have you seen Black Widow? I'm just, excited, because I, I love MCU Yes, films. there it is. Yeah. There I love is MCU. Scarlett Johansson and her little ballet. Hey, remember that time when we had to restart a whole podcast because of things that you were doing, and then you decided to do those things again? I do, I do. I oh, okay. I'm just making sure. Ago. So, I love MCU films, and one of the things that was kind of uneasy in the last uh, film, Endgame, uh, mm-hmm. is everybody was saying that you know nobody paid tribute to Black Widow. And so, the Russo brothers said the reason that they really didn't do anything big for her is because she still has a movie coming out. And this one does take place after Civil War. It, but it, it's it gonna be is awesome. After? 
Yeah, it's after. Really? I thought it was like a like earlier timeline. Really? So this isn't like it's a origin War. story type oh. thing? Nope. After I took War. this movie. This was Medea's big Russian family reunion. No, so you know, after Civil War, she had betrayed uh, the side that she was on because she had tased Black Panther. So obviously, after that, there were some re- repercussions. Um, so I'm assuming that she went to Russia, and that's how this film takes place. Um, Can we talk about Red Guardian? My God, yeah. David Harbor has created like my favorite superhero ever. Mega beard, scruffy. <laughs> giant fits oh my the god the transformation that that guy went through from stranger things to hellboy, hellboy too, yeah that and we see these kind of transformations in hollywood christian bale is famous yeah. for him. oh my mm-hmm. dude you could tell a girl like what's your body type you tell her christian bale there's literally a meme like all the roles he's machinist played. yeah <laughs> That's he's my played favorite. <laughs> he's played a meth head where he's a hundred and one pounds soaking wet he's been 350 pounds you david know. harbour th- but they still make jokes like oh you got fat because he like could barely fit into his suit because he's not been in practice yeah you got to watch that you haven't watched the trailer yet you got to watch it it's it is very exciting coming from somebody who did not give a flying squirrels crap about this movie whatsoever and well, now i'm hyped about the new black widow movie i do care because cool. taskmaster taskmaster's in it yeah, yeah. And you already know there's going to be some crazy fight scene with Black Widow and him because Black Widow is awesome. Her fight scenes in the she's MCU like the have female been Jason sick. Bourne is like the yeah like she's awesome yeah so it, it's something it, it's going to go down. I do like uh, Taskmaster is one of my favorite characters in um, Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom. Oh, yeah, yes. yeah, his supers and whatnot, and like his kind of like keep away game and the different arrows that he does are really cool. We were talking about apparently he can like take people's powers. Mm-hmm. Yep. So kind of like. We made a joke about Rogue. Siler from Heroes. Yeah, Siler. Siler from Heroes and Rogue from X Men taking people's powers, but I mean, we're all gonna see it. It's a Marvel movie. Let's be honest. Oh yeah, Disney has. I'm just happy because th- between this and then also the other thing that I did not care about, which was Marvel, which was the the uh, now I'm drawing a blank. What was the show we talked about last week with uh, Bucky Falcon the, and the Winter Soldier? Yeah, the Wil- yeah. Winter Soldier and Falcon show. I didn't really care about that. Now I'm excited about that. So yeah, they do they're a really turning good me job of, and yeah, creating intrigue. Um, and this is, I mean, this is the movie no one asked for, right? I think it someone, is. Yeah, but you they know, literally made an entire SNL skit about a Black Widow movie. Yeah, and how? <laughs> Tell me. I mean, honestly, when I was walking into the movies to watch Guardians of the Galaxy, I had zero interest. When I walked out of there, I'm like, this is my favorite Marvel movie ever. Yep. Tell me. So th- th- I don't know. This is going to be the exact same thing, but. I'm very excited for. Does Black knowing Widow the movie. outcome of a character curve your interest? So and we I've know that Black Widow every dies. Batman movie, and I know exactly what's going to happen to him. But does D- DC doesn't exactly have a history of changing their canon? As much as yeah, you know, now that Marvel is owned by uh, Disney, mm-hmm. you know they've changed the original fin- Infinity War story and the and the, mm-hmm. the gems and all that stuff. So in canon, we know that Black Widow dies. So how does that affect your interest in her backstory? This well, is interesting because we're in a very few short minutes. We're going to be talking about our elevator pitches. Mm-hmm. And mine has a direct correlation to what you're saying. Okay. And so Miguel, this, is, this is creating I'm excited some now. intrigue. I'm excited now. And Miguel also said that it's not a backstory. This is post-Endgame, according to no, Miguel. No, it's not post-Endgame. Not after post Civil endgame, War. After Civil War. Oh, okay. Never that's, mind. That's why I'm saying. So we we have A, B, and C. We know how A. We know A. We know C. But we don't know B. So if we know how C is ending, that's that's what I was saying. Well, you know, and about the creating intrigue thing, because we know where Black Widow's ultimate fate belongs, you know, it may have some emotional weight to us watching the movie. Exactly. Um, care to elaborate a little bit Miguel? i mean i mean it, anytime black widow has come on the screen she's always been kind of a counterpart to anybody in the movie mm-hmm. and her scenes have always been awesome so mm-hmm. it's going to be really cool to actually have a black widow film and just have her go off and, and we saw her running everything in Endgame. Yeah. like she like stepped up she took over and was running everything on earth like she was the nick fury who did she save in the in the like trench when she was coming up oh it was um <laughs> scarlet witch right wasn't scarlet witch like about to die and she comes and saves the day and, and no game? it was it was it was uh okoye. well 
No, it was Black Widow that starts fighting her first, wasn't it? Right. Oh no, no, no! You're right. You're right. She she attacks uh, Scarlet Witch. Anyway, so in these in these fight scenes in these fight scenarios, Scar, um, not Scarlet Witch, um, Black Widow. She's just she's just a mortal human that's amazing. You know, she can she, amazing kung fu, but yet she holds her own. I know kung fu. I'm a big fan of the the original gem storyline. I don't particularly love the changes that Kevin Feige and other people have made. Um, but Kevin Feige has put a lump in my throat when I was watching the, in a theater, you know, at the end mm-hmm. of Endgame when everybody comes back. Mm-hmm. I mean, oh, man. I'm I not like an overly emotional person. And when that happened, you know, like especially like seeing Peter Parker fade away, like that was like a big thing. I, Spider-Man's my favorite. So, you know, I'm pretty excited. Do we think that uh, what's Miguel? Do you know the release date for? Uh, 2020, I think early 2020. So yeah, it's probably June. Date, yeah. Let's literally just say yeah. this year. I mean, we're what, yeah. 15 days away. So we're not going to get a Disney Plus show that's going to affect this movie. Because mm-hmm. remember, we talked about in a previous podcast, you have to keep up with the new Kevin Feige stuff to know Phase 4 Marvel. I mean, he came out and said that. But, well, that's all we have for... Oh, Justin, what? Yeah. That's all we have for news. So if you could have any star wars show now what i mean any star wars show sitcom you could have it be a national geographic type show whatever you want we are going to give you our elevator pitch now miguel i didn't tell you about this you are our guest so you're going to be put on the spotlight you're not going to talk about it now you're going to go okay i'm going to go first i think russell's is going to be the best based on what he's told me already so russell's going to go the best well, no. do you want to go first? This Russell? is like this is like a pool shark thing. My story is going to be terrible. <laughs> he's setting us up. No, yeah, he's setting us up. He's setting us up. All right, have he's gonna... you guys <laughs> seen? I happen to have a chance cube. <laughs> All right, I want a Discovery Channel esque okay. how it's made, but all Star Wars. I want it narrated this... by C three PO. Okay. And I literally Anthony Daniels want an entire episode, no, but but not real life. It's not Anthony Daniels. It's C three PO. So okay. this this is in the Star Wars universe. Yes. This is C three PO explaining. Oh, yes. To yes. You. Wrap your head around that. Yes. Wrap your head around that. I want a whole episode. This is how a Imperial starship oh, is. This is a great idea. Made. I want all of the assembly lines. You know, I want all that here on. It's like Camino, the Sesame Street of the galactic empire yeah like discovery channel how it's made like who knows how ball pimp you know ballpoint pins are made we know now because we saw it on how it's made how do we know how camino saber darts are made here on camino we gather and then the presses you see what i'm saying yes yeah i, see what I saying. want I can see that yeah that's what i want here are bounty here are how bounty hunters are made you threw me for a loop i didn't i didn't see that angle you kind of thought like a real life like this is how we make star wars yeah, props like, no, I thought you meant like name the show that you would create if you were creating a Star Wars show to consume. That is as... a Star Wars show, though. Yeah. No, but like uh, a how it's made in the Star Wars galaxy. It I be, love it. It's it could be anything. Awesome. I mean, I got an idea for a sitcom. You know, maybe. I, you know, we'll get. Ladies into and that gentlemen, later. this is a show about nothing. Yes, in the Star Wars galaxy. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> uh, Justin. Okay, so my show. I love your idea, by the way. Which one? You already know the my... one you're about to talk about. I've already told you. You did. Oh crap! I forgot I told you. <laughs> so my show title Corsac. We are on Corellia. It is post New Republic has been destroyed. First Order is on the come up. You totally changed what you told me earlier. I probably Justin. Did. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry to interrupt you, but for those viewers who are on a, who aren't familiar with Corellia, give us a I'm little starting over. Corellia. Corsac. We're on Corellia. <laughs> uh huh. The Galactic. Oh, dang. You totally messed I'm my sorry. train of thought up. Bro. The, All right. The First the New Order's Re- on the rise. Yeah, New Republic has fallen. First Order's on the rise. Uh-huh. We're on Corellia. This is an entire planet that is a hub planet. All the ships that are the best ships are made there. There's tons of trade. There's tons of everything going on. This is the underworld using these this actual opportunity of everything just being in turmoil and crazy. There's no gal- galactic government. There's nothing to govern everybody this is a small planet-wide force that has now taken the reins of trying to hold on to what they have and it's it's a very jack ryan 24 sherlock luther action suspense show 
the story arc would be one season is one entire story. Episodically, it's little things that happen all coming to a culmination of this final season. And it's following, it's following the lives of these people that are regular people trying to deal with the huts and dealing with the Black Suns and dealing with all of these criminal organizations that are trying to take over while there is no government and keep their, keeping their planet in some type of order. I like I'm it. with it. That sounds awesome. I'd watch it. That's Big my Corsic idea. Fan. Russell. Corsac's never really been anything except a few video games, so I, I like no Force powers, no Jedi. It's kind of right. something that's uh, similar to Rogue One, because we get to, or not in Rogue One, in, a, in Solo we get to see mm-hmm. a little bit of Corsac. We get to see a little bit of what that planet looked like, and building off of that. Russell, I am, nice. I am dripping with anticipation. Oh, are you? I've heard there's I, a I, monologue. Yeah, I heard monologue. You, you wrote some stuff down. Okay. I'm waiting. Imagine yourself walking along a little road, and you see all these red eyes staring at you Jealous. in a dark, dark forest road. Okay, just kidding. I liked where that was going! <laughs> <laughs> just building anticipation. Okay. Here we go. This beautiful, small, blue-green gem of a world is the first planet we see in the 1977 original Star Wars galaxy. Alderaan was always shrouded in mystery for years after its destruction back in 77, and we only get a glimpse of this beautiful planet in canon near the tail end of Revenge of the Sith with Bail Organa bringing Leia back to his wife and Queen Brea Organa to raise her as their own. Alderaan needs to be explored with its own older public TV series on Disney+. Plus. This would only add to the emotional weight of seeing it blown to smithereens by the Death Star. I suggest a story following a young Bail Organa as he struggles with the trials of adolescence and his marriage alliance to stop the feuding families, his own House Organa and the rival House Antilles. Jedi, of course, would be involved, as in Legends, Jedi Watchman Jerris Kobath is brought in to settle the Alderaan Ascendancy Contention, a conflict of which House should rule Alderaan. Alderaan is a beautiful world, rich in natural beauty, in all types of arts, and where young people are encouraged to further their education and played a pivotal role in galactic politics, up until its destruction by the evil empire. Please, Disney, give us a series that explores this world in its utter wonder. The people of Alderaan deserve that. First of all, let monologue. Me, let me tell you. We don't have a monologue. First of all, I loved that. <laughs> what is this about? <laughs> Where? What planet? <laughs> for, no, no, for real. That was really good. My follow-up question, and this is not sarcastic, I'm being completely serious. Why are you not writing the description for every episode on our show? <laughs> for real? Are you serious right now? Like... Disney, Bob Iger, because we know you're listening. Make that a show, for starters, okay? You're completely right. It would add to the emotional weight instead of Leia just saying, you know, Tarkin, I expected you to be holding Vader's leash, okay? Right. Loved it. I'm all for it. All right, let's do I it. I didn't know that the Antilles and they, the, their house oh, yeah. rivals. Yeah, the house Antilles and house Bail Organa. Um, Brea was an Antilles. Um, so to form a kind of an alliance and to settle the, the houses, you know, struggle and, uh, rivalry, they ended up doing a marriage alliance and that's how Alderaan and, or Bale and, uh, Brea became married. That reminds like me it. of, uh, Resistance and Aftermath cause we get Wedge and, you know, Wedge and a lot of Aftermath. I like that. With all that being said, Miguel, do you have any idea of what you would do? So you know how Star Wars always starts with long, long ago in a galaxy far, far away? Close uh-huh. enough. So what if we... (laughs) (laughs) That's it. That's the end of the show. So so what about a modern day Star Wars, but that first episode, you know, I I haven't had enough time to write the the pilot, but after the first episode, if you guys have ever seen Split, you don't realize it's Mm -hmm. connected to, is it Unbreakable? Until the very end. And then the modern day Star Wars, the last couple minutes, or last minute, you realize that this is... Connected to one, the universe. One insane guy imagining everything in the back of a van. That's all I got. It's like the messed up circuits of R2-D2. <laughs> this brings to mind, Justin, uh, the end of a certain book we just read. Yes. Don't give it any spoilers for those in the audience that haven't read it. But 
it ends with some pretty weighty we are gonna do a swift bonus episode on that like maybe like 20 minutes yeah because i got some i got some thoughts on that but guys let's be honest let's talk about some mandalorian you want to hear us talk about our boy in is that beskar this week's episode, episode five, written and directed by Dave Filoni. Our boy. Is called. The Savior. Gunslinger. Is he the Savior, though? Mm, we, yes. We're going to get into it. He might not be the Savior. He is. A dog fight! We've been wanting it. A dog fight. So, Star Wars. Finally, we have some model flying through space. The same technology used in 1977 and in other movies to create. The esque of flying through space against a blue backdrop to create black space with white stars. Another bounty hunter is pursuing our Mandalorian. He tries to get him on his targeting computer. He takes shot after shot, damaging his Mando ship. Russell hmm. brought out an amazing point that I did not even catch. What type of ship was that? I did a little research. It looks like, well, both ships actually in this so called dogfight. Our Clone Wars era, and I think someone in a previous episode mentioned that the, uh, Razor, the Razor, Ra- Razor Crest Razor Crest was a Clone Wars era ship, and what this ship that's pursuing him is is a Clone Wars era X wing, also known as an Arc One Seventy Starfighter. Ninety nine percent sure that's what it is. Yeah, it definitely looked like it. I love it, and we have a ton of nostalgia in this episode. And Armando, he does a Fast and the Furious one through nine, soon to be ten break move. <laughs> When are they going to learn to, like, prep for that? Seriously. Yeah. Like, hit the brakes. That's an option. Anders has so much to say about that with wings and space and all that. I know. His mind is just spinning right now. So Armando hits the brakes. Uh, our other bounty hunter flies over him. Armando then takes his shot. He is dead in space after the damage that he has taken. Um, it was just looking to the callback to Darth Vader's targeting system when they're in the trends of the Death Star, where it's like, and then it lines up and he fires. All of the targeting systems. Yeah. Loved it. Yeah, Loved it was it. major callback For to sure. the Death Star trench run. I have you now. What? <laughs> I, <laughs> had, I had to. I had to. <laughs> now let's blow this thing and go home. Armando is dead in space. His ship has taken immense damage. Armando then sets course for the nearest planet, which... I can't wait for a new planet. Oh, man. You know what? It's probably a planet I've never heard for of. For sure. It can't be a planet I don't know. think it's ever been in a Star Wars movie. There's no way. Like, they've done too many planets that we know. Have you heard of Tatooine? Ever been there? Ugh. Come on, guys. But, no, I, I did like it. I just, I had to be dramatic. It gave all the feels, but come on, seriously, pick a new place. One thing that I appreciate, Dave Armando... Filoni also knows is J.J. Abrams. For sure. Uh, we fly into Mandalorian. Uh, Mandalorian. We're, we're on Mandalorian. We fly into Tatooine. This looks like the same exact shot that Luke and Ben are looking over the city of Mos Eisley on top of a cliff in episode mm-hmm. four. Yeah. Star Manny's, Wars. Yeah, they gave you all the feels in this episode. Our Mandalorian then lands in a docking bay that is given to him by the tower control of Tatooine. Assault of the Earth woman that is apparently the complete push of this entire show, whether it be a bartender or a mechanic. She is amazing. Meets up with him and tells him uh, that his ship is an absolute mess. It'll cost him a lot of money. Uh, The Mando then tells her that he will pay her. She says, I've heard that before. We once again hear a callback to our Womp Rat theme. And if you don't know who Amy Sedaris is, you probably know her face and her voice from ridiculous shows, uh, Strangers with Candy. She was on... uh, unbreakable kimmy schmidt she's normally mm-hmm. uh, dude she's just had so many hilarious comedy roles before i just wanted to back up a little bit did we ever know before that tatooine had two moons i knew that it had two suns but it definitely showed two moons in this scene when they were landing on the planet i never knew that it had moons i have to look i have to watch it again yeah i didn't notice that no droids no droids armando says as always calling back to his horrible childhood upbringing. exactly that's remember we talked about that a couple episodes ago i was like why is he saying no droids on the first episode i've come to think it's a hundred percent he went through crazy trauma and he's like the the b2 battle droids now he's straight up turned away from him well didn't we see i think in episode three or four where he's about to get killed by that yeah mm-hmm. that droid right yeah. the hatch opens sense. up and then the battle droids Could right be there a reason yeah i mean if i think it's ptsd anyway, some dude some droids trying to kill me i'm not gonna like it anyway 500 imperial credits apparently have some sort of worth because it's enough to cover cover the docking fee did you catch that yeah i, I was thinking 
if we think back to A New Hope, the Imperials had a a big presence there. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. We, you know, we're going to get to it. Armando, he he leaves the docking bay and we see stormtroopers. We saw a lot of that in the trailers, which gave us this idea of how much grit was going to be in this TV show of mm-hmm. these spikes with stormtrooper heads on spikes and, and all this stuff. But he gives her Imperial credits. She does not have the same qualms that our Mandalorian had in episode one, where he talked about the Empire being out of business and he wanted some other form of currency. So, I need something more real. I need something more real. We then hear the swamp rat term, or the womp rat term, again, which is a native creature to the planet Tatooine. As a slur. Our baby, yeah. our Wasn't baby Yoda, cute. is left again. Can yeah. we? <laughs> Child services needs to be he called. He doesn't know what he's doing. Can we? Armando keeps leaving little baby. Like, we go to Sauragon, and he can't go out inside and play with little kids. But we get to Tatooine, and all of a sudden... He locks he, him in like a like a locker in the uh ship it reminded me of when uh in the first movie when they run into like the control room and they're like quick jam the door and it goes you know the door comes down it reminded me of that and somehow i don't want to step on your toes he gets out he gets out that's he's like he waves his hand with a very pouty face stop leaving baby yoda unattended mando like (laughs) He did not look happy either. He was very like, <laughs> like oh. little kid, like pouty about to lose his crap. It's like when you wake up in a strange world and all your parents are gone. You're like, where did they go? Omera was trying to tell you. You know, she was trying to give you the, the motherly instinct. She was trying to help you. Our mechanical woman and our three pit crew droids are playing Sabacc. Call back to plenty of solo esque other things and the most famous gambling card game in the Star Wars universe. Our, uh,. Mechanic Woman then hears some coos and some cries, which we later find out is our baby Yoda. But this sounds exactly like in me and mm-hmm. Russell, me and you locked eyes. We're like, what? This and is- this wasn't the George Lucas revised special edition, wow, you know, crazy yeah. digital sound. It was the original old Ben screaming to scare away the sand people from the speeder. All in his in robe new- and right. waving his hands around. And that's the sound that we got. Definitely. Somehow a 50 year old baby knew to do that. Mm-hmm. Our, our mechan our our uh, cruiser mechanic pulls out a gun on our baby Yoda and calls out. The motherly instincts kick in when she realizes that this is just a baby. Note she does not know what it is. Mm-hmm. So yet again we have Mystery another species character that is not familiar with this species, which kind of adds to this credence that you know later in the episode we find out that they just refer to it as a child. Yeah. You know this this adds to the mystery of even that George Lucas has created himself, that we don't know what the species is. Even people in other planets, you know, Muzz Eisley, yes, it, 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 Tatooine was on the Outer Rim, but we still don't know what this what this creature is. Even 19 years after Yoda, the Grand Master of the Jedi Order, who should have been well-known across the entire Old uh, Republic, you know, the Galactic Republic, mm-hmm. and across the universe, people still do not know what this species is. So... Well, I mean, Moss Eisley was that wretched hive of scum and villainy. So, I mean, it kind of was one of the main spaceports on Tatooine. So, I'm sure this, you know, docking bay mechanic woman have seen your fair share of alien species. And she had no idea what Yoda was. I love it. Baby Yoda was. She wants to get something to eat for Baby Yoda. She says, get something with bones in it. Maybe protein. Maybe she knows that our Baby Yoda needs something to eat. Maybe protein is scarce in this time. They know he likes frogs. She makes a funny comment about charging Armando extra for childcare. So it's still a problem, even in the Star Wars universe. So those listening who have to spend ample amounts of money just to have somebody watch your kid during the day so that you can go to work, Mando feels your pain. He walks into the Tatooine, Mos Eisley. Oh, man. All the nostalgia. Cantina. Even the entrance. Like, I was expecting a do-back to be right at the entrance. Yeah. But, I'm, but the, they it even had there. the same little, like, a uh, The same door. door. The same door that... The, oh, yeah. The... the no, the same door that uh, C-3PO and R2 hide in to hide away from the Stormtroopers, uh, yes, if yes, you yes, notice yes, it yes. to the left. Like, the exact same door. We kind of asked ourselves, like, did they shoot this on set in Africa? Oh, yeah. Um, Tanzania? Tanzania, or was this done uh, in uh, a Tanzania is war-torn right now. This is it's sure not like it was stage. in the 70s. So Are you sure it's war torn right now because i literally just somebody somebody posted on facebook that they went to the set like it's possible i mean this may well, be a few years ago they uh-huh. weren't shooting there i know that much all i can say is this cantina was the same with very major differences and we'll get into it miguel so, fake news fake news oh okay so we get into the cantina <laughs> and it is not our boy calling for no droids yeah it is droids ironic 
<laughs> serving people inside of our cantina. What happened to our bartender? Dude, I mean, I, don't I know. want a cantina. This is the okay, day sh- elevator pitch. This I want to know shift. what happened to the bartender. <laughs> can Moss we, Eisley Cantina. I would so watch that. Russell, can we, can this we is a- the day shift. They didn't bring in the big guns until night shift. Come uh, on. It this did is like seem a little empty, it's didn't it? Empty. This okay, I'm sorry, shift. but in A New Hope, it was day when they were walking in. It was. Well, it's probably a weekend, though. It was, it was a weekend. It's a Saturday. What is a weekend? Yeah. Born Every day, day is a work day at Tatooine. We have tons of Easter eggs inside this cantina, like R5, our boy, our guy, our little red R5 unit. The oh, step yeah. above R2-D2, his motivator has been fixed. I was <laughs> just going to say, he's got a good motivator. This, this was definitely not a coincidence. This was completely done on purpose. You nope. going to get into the droid behind the bar a little bit? Go ahead. Oh, well, you know, it was very similar to the... Uh, same droid that we've seen in Jabba's palace who was telling R2 and 3PO what they will be doing and when R2 was beeping in defiance he goes you're a feisty little one but you'll soon learn some respect I have need for you on the master's sail barge you'll fit in quite nicely that went longer than I thought and I'm really impressed (laughs) Armando then asks for work. He is a bounty hunter, after all. He has to repair his ship. He now has another mouth to feed. He has to feed little baby Yoda. Okay? Come on, guys. We need more frogs. Get Kermit. I don't care. Okay? Feed him something. He then is offered absolutely no work because the bartender, uh, as Russell mentioned, says that the bounty hunter guild is out of work there. Then we get a call from what appears to be a Backstreet Boy. Okay? Toro Lawnmower. Backstreet's back. Toro. Calatin. Kalin can? Calican? Calican. Calican? Calican? I don't like him. He sucks. Yeah. Uh, the I same issue that Justin had with the random. Long haired dude. Cr- what was the prawn farmer guy? Yeah. Krill farmer. Dude, Krill farmer. He was you know, totally... I have perfect reason why I should hate Fennec. Or no, what's his name? Toro Calican? Yeah. Ugh. Toro Backstreet Boy. Wasn't a fan. Go back to Earth. No Didn't one likes care you on earring. Tatooine. Yeah, the earring no. was an odd choice. It was very like a... He's probably wanted hey, on Did you guys systems. catch he was sitting exactly where Han Solo was sitting when he killed Greedo? I'm sorry. <laughs> when I saw that, I was really, really hoping. I'm like... Okay, I wanted to he... see a bullet hole above... Mm-hmm. Well, actually, no, because Han shot first in the original, so there wouldn't be. But there'd be ah, a bullet hole on the other side. Now, gotcha! Now you see what's wrong with Star Wars fandom. <laughs> <laughs> that, that train... Of, but, just like you said, he was sitting exactly where Han was sitting. I was expecting... I was expecting a lot more from our guy, okay? But we're going to get into that because, you know, we didn't actually see his body get thrown into Biggs Canyon, okay? So, Beggars. Beggars. Beggars Canyon. Biggs. Biggs died. Biggs Darklighter. That's what you get for having a mustache. It's an original name. Man, I was Wonder really into Biggs. That. Biggs and Luke's relationship. Oh, elevator pitch. I want backstory. On Why what? are they such good friends? What because they, they grew do? up on they Tatooine together, dude. I want to a... see the adventures of Biggs and Luke. Why? All right? You know Why? What? Because I want to see more some Skywalker T-16 stories. targeting Womp Raps at Beggar's Canyon. I want to see that. Continue. Right. I wouldn't pay to watch that show, but okay. <laughs> we'll, we will continue. You would pay, and it would be on Disney+, Plus, and you would click it because it's Star Wars. Listen, just because I have three years in advance. Touche. A bounty puck is then showed. Finnick, Sean. Armando completely dismisses this bounty. He doesn't want anything to do with it. He tells him, good luck with that. She was a top killer for all the crime syndicates. He names Huts. Do we think that this could be other crime syndicates? I'm hoping Crimson Black Dawn. Sun. Crimson Sun, Black Sun, bring him in. Well, only Crimson. Crimson Dawn, Black Sun. Crimson Dawn, I think that was kind of a huge missed opportunity because I do think that we're going to get some sort of Han Solo uh, spinoff in a Disney Plus show because we're not getting a second movie and we're not getting a third movie because it you know, performed so badly. Um, but he tells him that she is a top killer for all the other to- uh, tier. crime syndicates. <laughs> Taro then says, this is my first job. Okay. Joey from the Backstreet Boys needs this to get into the guild. You won't make it past sunrise, boy. Toro. Not he- Taro. Toro. Taro. Toro. I mean, my dude dies. Does it matter? No. Okay. You just spoiled <laughs> the episode. So... <laughs> he tells him to meet him at the hangar. Mando goes back to the hangar. Baby Yoda is missing. Once again, call child services. Stop leaving him alone. How do we go from Sorgon, 
where Mando doesn't want to let him out of his sights. Can we talk about something real quick? Sorry to interrupt you. Kim. Tell me. Connor, Tell I don't me. want to hide my ideas in a bushel basket. Don't do it. But I have a real problem with these fobs. Okay. What exactly does he have memorized? A freaking blinking red light? I knew. I knew Maybe it's like Morse I, I am. I am losing my mind. <laughs> Goes boop, boop, beep, beep. <laughs> Morse code. That's also, a, hey, that's that's more of a theory than we've gotten. Does he plug it up to his iPhone and it like gives him a readout of what data it's re- read? Because I'm losing pad. it. So uh, data pad. I said we we were talking about this in our group chat, and I mentioned that it has to be DNA, right? But no, it doesn't have to be DNA. It, it doesn't. But what else do we have? We have to go based on what we have on screen and just the problem you have now we have no information on how it goes based off of first of all it was dna and yes it might be a bounty bounty hunter's secret guild technology but i'm sorry you don't think they would have luke's dna and the first order and and uh, force awakens wouldn't have this fob to track him to skellig island or whatever the heck the place is called i'll tell you why no matter the explanation that they're gonna give us i'm gonna have a problem with you can't tell me that there has been a tracking fob on Baby Yoda without the party of interest having Baby sure. Yoda at some point. And is as mysterious and rare as the species is. It's not like they have a, a sample unless maybe they do. Maybe they found a home planet. Something. Something that gives them some sort of uh, genetic marker that they're able to use this fob for. I mean, they have to explain it. If they don't explain it, I'm going to get real upset because the fob thing could be like the starship hyperspace weapon in last jedi it kind of breaks star wars lore in a way oh you're telling me that they could have just you know hooked up a droid to a mon calamarian cruiser and shot it in light speed to the death star and it would have blown up the death star we're gonna have a last jedi episode so the Which- same thing with the fob anyway my rant is over no no i i totally get it yeah, and one more thing about the fob thing. Maybe it's going to be some big old John Favreau, Dave Filoni joke. Like, slapstick humor type thing. Like, oh, I studied that thing. Don't worry. I have it memorized. Mm-hmm. So Toro. And that's possible. Yeah. Proceeds to smash the fob because apparently fob he doesn't need it. Fob is already. Yeah, he, he's got it memorized. He doesn't need it. I know those lights. Armando tells him to come back with two bikes. At the hangar, 305. I believe it was 305. Something like that. I did not look that close. 305. He he tells him to come back. Armando goes back, and the child is missing. Call child services again. Stop leaving baby Yoda unattended. I don't understand. Our mama mechanic is sleeping. She is then woken, and she comes out, and she says, You have a lot to learn about raising a young one. Scolding Armando. I don't blame her. I'd scold him, too. Stop leaving poor, defenseless baby Yoda alone. Jerry Blank knows how to take care of a baby, if Stranger Things taught us anything. Clearly. She says it takes a lot longer with droids to repair his ship, so it's going to cost more money. Our manners come back to Armando. He tells her, thank you. Please, ma'am. Armando and Toro come with the swoop bikes. I'm swoop so- oh my gangs. God. Swoop, bike, swoop bike boys is going to be a shirt that we create. Swoop bike boys. I'm, all, a sw- I'm a swoop bike all boy. All it did, guys, I don't know if you've ever played the Shadows of the Empire swoop level which was literally the hardest level in the entire game because it was so fast. And it was almost like one of those things where the swoop bike is pretty much stationary at the bottom of the screen and the, and the level is just whooshing past you. It's almost like tunnel vision where you're going 185 mm-hmm. mile an hour. All I know is during that scene, I could not stop smiling. It was great. I could have had 35 minutes of just them f- Dude, they swooping, were swooping around. They were sending it over those dunes. They were like motocross style sending it over the peaks of those dunes. It was freaking amazing. And I loved when they like get off and on it and it would just kind of like bounce and hover there. The, the special effects in this show are incredible. The production value, it's absolutely incredible. And they do have to stop. And what is the first reason why they have to stop? Because they see Tusken Raiders. <laughs> A conversation then ensues between Armando and Toro. And our Toro doesn't have nice things to say about the Tusken Raiders. They better keep their distance. But he tells them to look, to look behind him, basically. <laughs> and <laughs> the Tusken Raiders are right behind our man Toro. He jumps in astonishment. Um, yeah, I just wanted to bring out one little thing about these Tusken Raiders. Since when have you known TSL? Tusken Raiders sand people to negotiate. Tusken sign language. 
is a thing that we can learn. T Tuscan Sign Language. TSL. Before we get into TSL, I was just saying that I can't remember the book. It may not be canon, but I think it's the Obi Wan book, if I'm remembering. It's the one where he's literally on Tatooine for the first couple months after no, giving, it's not giving it's Luke. A comic, there's a comic book. Is, is it also a comic book? There's a book that is no longer canon, and there's a comic book series that is now canon. Anyway, in Sam People and Tusken Raider lore, there is an entire village that disappears, which throws the Tusken Raiders on the planet as a whole into a frenzy, and their race and their population has dwindled so much that they have begun negotiating with the outsider sky people whatever they're called not locals because they're the locals sky um <laughs> exactly. sky people that's avatar well whatever it's called the blue they ones? have changed their tactics or the way they interact with non-tuscan raiders because of this village that has mysteriously disappeared and that is a callback to a certain movie. And the women and the children too. Armando then uses the bionics to get to gain passage for the Tusken Raiders. After gaining passage, they see a dewback dragging what appears to be a dead body. After inspection by Armando, they discover that this is another bounty hunter. After discovering a tracking fob, shots fired. Literally. I'm not talking that about that. That best taking all the shots, all the damage. (laughs) Armando then runs back to cover, back with Toro. They figure out that the bounty that they are searching for is hiding in the hills. She has the high ground. An obvious callback to Revenge of the Sith. I love that they keep the trope going. Like, they know now that they're... It's an infamous Star Wars trope that the high ground... One of the best memes to come out of the prequels. It is. It is. Like, the high ground is like the end-all, be-all. Like, if you have the high ground... Literally, why are you even fighting us? Don't it a, try is it. Is it a joke, though? It is. I mean, it is. Yeah, it is. Among Star Wars fandom, it is. A blaster shoots up as much as it does down. It's not like we're like using like. Uh, you want to how I you you want to know why I know it's a meme? Because my favorite prequel meme is the Halo Energy Sword, and it's directly over Anakin's face, and it says, "You under you underestimate <laughs> my power." And then underneath it is Obi Wan, and there's just a shotgun with a bull true metal, <laughs> and it says, "I have the that's high awesome. ground. Don't try it." Yeah, like that's how you know it's it's a meme. I did like the the call out to the MK modified rifle. Only an MK modified rifle could shoot that far. That was cool. Yeah, and he talks about at that range. That yeah. it wouldn't affect his right. best scar, and it literally just ricochets. Da-ding! Dude, it has like one of the greatest sound effects, like that ka-chink metal sound, like deflected. I love that the the force of the blaster bolt still knocks him off his feet. That was great. And we we're getting a ground the ground working for Baskar not being invincible. Yeah, yeah. You know, so there is gonna be which. Okay, this is a, w- a very like three sentence tangent. What if our boy shows up in Rise of the Skywalker in tattered Baskar steel armor, like Return of the Jedi style, like background scene? I would hate it. You would? I would. Don't do not mix my Mando with this movie. Coming Dude, that's out. what they do. We're on Tatooine. That's what Disney does. Don't they mix you do things. it. Didn't we see some news about everybody knows each other in the Star Wars galaxy? Something Remember we talked about. Yeah, this. I know. It's Last my biggest Skywalker? pet peeve. But JJ, do you did, think that'll happen? Do you, yes, because JJ said that he's literally bringing out all the stops for this movie. Everybody's going to be in this cameo movie. cameo crazy. What would you say, Miguel? Said, so didn't we see some news about Mandalorian and possibly being connected to Last Skywalker? That's what I thought. I saw too. Yeah. 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 There so was I, I'm about that. imagining a Return of the Jedi style bounty hunters in the background. Our boy's got his armor, but it's tattered. It's patinaed. It's his cape is now like disintegrated in areas and he's like a kind of like a like in return of the jedi where you get to see like this bounty hunter standing on the ship and they're like the the end all be all i can see him in there not a spoken part but like they just a reference to him in the in the new movie newsflash baby yoda is the rise of skywalker that is a possibility let's be honest did we talk about um, he, he's the only whether one that it's can confirmed stop did we talk about whether it's confirmed that Baby Yoda was conceived the exact same year no. that Anakin was? So it could be somehow connected to how Anakin was born of the Force? I hate that theory. 
Know, we can theory. talk about it. Let's I talk about our, Let's talk about our boy getting back on the swoops trying to attack at night. Oh, before we do that, I thought it was interesting that do you think he was actually asleep? When he walked up, he's like, "Hey, Mando, oh, let's no, go." He was for sure awake. Yeah. So yeah. do you think he was maybe testing his new partner to see what he would do when he appeared weak or asleep? So that's exactly what happens. Armando takes cover. He tells them that they have to wait for nightfall. And, you know, he, he might have been asleep a little bit. He probably think, woke him up halfway through. Yeah, he was letting the, he was letting the kid have some fun. Yeah. Um, Toro uh, makes a complete fool of himself that <laughs> like I have a child. written in my notes. Armando, uh, after he wakes up and uh, basically tells Toro to, you know, knock it off, kid. Uh, he tells him that they're going to take uh, what essentially is flash guns and they're going to ride their speeder bikes. And with these flash guns, they're going to shoot intermediately back and forth to blind any scope that is on any rifle of the assailant and the bounty that they are seeking. They uh, proceed to ride forward on these swoop bikes that are amazing and that mm. I wish that we all had. I need one. Uh, definitely need one. Uh, and they shoot back and forth. Our assailant is able to shoot our Mandalorian's swoop bike. Our Mandalorian then takes another shot into the Baskar chest, which does not harm him. Dead center chest. Ta-ting! Smoking. Like, <laughs> yeah, like... Oh, yeah, he's steaming. And like you said Ru- early, Russell, it knocked him back, like, hard. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, classic Hollywood sniper type of stuff. Okay, all right. Are we still cooking? <laughs> That's his chest armor. <laughs> okay, gotcha. It's cooled off, guys. Don't it's worry. It's cooled off, all right. So then, uh, Toro... Sneaks up behind our assailant. Oh, man. Ming-Na Wen. She is just as awesome as she was in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And she proceeds to completely hand it to Mm -hmm. Toro. He was uh, completely unfit for this job, as he stated earlier. (laughs) And well, that's exactly why he needed the Mando's help. That earring is good for nothing. Absolutely nothing. Provides no protection at all. (laughs) Maybe uh, maybe it might be worth more money. He should have sold that earring instead of taking that job, maybe. Before he is killed, our Mandalorian shows up and saves the day. He then chucks a pair of Imperial cuffs to her, tells her to cuffs herself, and he saves the day. Finnick then says, a Mandalorian. Ever been to Navarro? And finally, we know the name. Finally, yes. Whether this is the name of the city or the planet, we don't know, but we have a name. Navarro. She's throwing shade at him that our boy Toro Lawnmower does not even pick up. Toro Lawnmower. I if mean, you notice, I got it earlier, but it's still killing me. He don't even pick it up. Like she's like, "Oh, I don't even care if you've been to Navarro. You're still gonna be caught." Like he doesn't even pick up that. He's like, an idiot. He's, I hate him. Like, Everything about him. Did yeah. I say earlier in this episode that the way you felt yeah. about? Oh, I hate this guy. You didn't like him. Yeah, I mean, he was a little bit lackluster. I was expecting. He wasn't even a good actor. I feel like he. I said walked he... on the set, rolled on the set. Set. He's like, I guess I'll act today. Yeah, that's kind of the feeling I got. The cadence and the way he talked really reminded me of Hayden Christensen. Like, just the way he no, said Hayden things Christensen and he, the way better. he carried things. People, Not like he's like exactly the same, but like, oh, I don't even know. Hayden, like, gets, Hayden gets a lot of shade. And it was, it, listen, Attack of the Clones might be the worst Star Wars movie ever made. Okay. It but it's might. got one of the best lightsaber duels and all those Jedi fighting in that arena was epic cool it still is the worst (laughs) star wars movie ever made but when yoda gets his lightsaber and starts the worst star wars movie. i don't care what you say connor there are redeemable qualities in that movie you just i prefer it over last jedi any day of the week you were just talking about how bad this is a different was we digress. This is a different episode. Yes. Okay. This Hayden is a Christian different episode. was bad. He was better in when Revenge Yoda of the Sith. pulled out that lightsaber. Oh, the entire movie theater freaked. We did out. erupt. We did erupt. But that's a different episode. Yeah. Let's go. Remind back. Remind me back in two thousand and one, and twelve year old me was freaking out because Yoda used his lightsaber for the first time. Two thousand three. That's Revenge of the Sith, as 2001. Navarro is the first planet we see with the guild base and chubs. Fennec says... Do you like that name, by the way? Fennec? Fennec? Yeah. I, I think mm-hmm. this... Um, I read an article about this because I'm finally putting two two together because I, I couldn't remember exactly how they pronounced it in the show because I can't spell for anything to save my life, so I thought maybe I spelled it wrong. But Fennec... For sharts and googles? Fennec refers to a Fennec fox. And her character is based on a fennec fox. And fennec foxes in the wild like to hide in dunes and caves in the desert. 
And that's exactly where we found her first. <laughs> and her hairstyle is also apparently based on a Fennec Fox. This was in the article that I read. I'll definitely find the article and, and post it uh, on our Facebook. But uh, Armando comes. They bind her up. Um, Armando has to then go and find the dewback, dewback. that they that they saw because earlier. Tora lawnmower is too stingy to go get it for himself. Yeah, and this also comes because Fennec destroyed one of the swoop bikes um, that they had. So he goes to find it, and while Mando is off doing uh, his finding dewback things, uh, Fennec then proceeds to tell Toro lawnmower that uh, the Mando is worth more than she is. She's really working her angles here. She's trying to get him to She's set her free. She's an elite mercenary. She knew her stuff. She wasn't a first-timer. And she knew that he was going to be naive. And me, I was swung for a loop. I don't know about you guys. I did yeah. not think that he was going to do what he did. No. I, the first time I watched yeah. it, I was like, whoa. Swung for a loop, Justin? Dude, I, I did not. I thought he was going to. She raised her hands to him. I thought mm. she was going to for sure, like... Double team, like unlock handcuffs. Double team, take him out. Get swung for a loop. Russell. I was, in fact, when he, it was very western again. Pulling out that pistol from that holster, it was super fast. I Gut would shot. like to see skill. Armando and him face off. Well, I we, thought, and who knew. would who would draw faster? But boom, it's like uh, so switch. You know that game on Switch where you have to draw sure. really fast. And Miguel, were you thrown for a loop? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I was I, I didn't think he was going to even listen to her, what she was saying, but the fact that he shot her was pretty surprising. And so they, you didn't think she was going to listen to her, but you, all, but you didn't think he was going to kill her? I didn't think either. Okay. Well, they portrayed him kind of as like a dodo, mm-hmm, yeah. I'm like a noob that I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, but tons of naivety. Can I just had... say one thing about the whole Western style? Yeah. It's definitely Western for anybody of the, anybody wondering oh, yeah. whether... Because somebody had posted on Reddit that they had said it kind of has some Japanese samurai style vibe going towards it. And, mm-hmm. and somebody working on the show, they said, no, it's definitely a Western. Hence our opening yeah, music. So Spaghetti Western. Just wanted to add were, that in. Well, there are, most of the time it's Western. The last episode, directed by Bryce Howard, definitely had a Japanese samurai movie going for it. But it's, again, it was I can't, mixed. I can't remember the movie that it's based off of but that is seven samurai se- yeah seventh samurai and it's literally a samurai who is hired by a village of people to kill bandits that are raiding their village mm-hmm. and he literally befriends and fathers an orphan child in that village i mean it's you know it's very it's extremely similar i mean the parallels are you know what i was surprise going back to what we were talking about with that exact scene we were kind of led to believe that toro lawnmower was an idiot i love that you're calling can we just toro can we lawnmower. just say this over and over toro lawnmower toro lawnmower toro he didn't lawnmower. know what he was doing but when he drew on fennec he 100 percent had skill with the blaster like he was i imagined him as like the kid that practices all day long with like a katana in a garage mm-hmm. like he's got one move yeah, and he's like waiting for the moment that he can do the one move. Oh, like, he got it! Shoots him like that was like his only thing that he was good at, and that one move was to shoot her in the stomach. Ooh, she did not look happy. She was sizzling. Did you hear that? Yeah, it was like, and then she just crumpled to the floor. Was this? Poor Ming No Wen, and that was some smarts from our boy. I mean, he after shoots her, he he admits if he would have released her from the cuffs and and from that that she would have bested him in combat. She would have killed him and it would have been just up uh, to her to either escape or to do whatever else that she needed to do. Our Mandalorian returns and he finds what appears to be the bounty that they were searching for to be dead with no signs of Toro anywhere. He then makes his way back uh, to the uh the hanger where most his, Eisley, yeah the hanger the hanger was um you know i bet you anything that this hanger 305 it's the same number as the one in new hope that's what i was thinking yeah. is where like can we look that the up number from i did not well, he catch said the number it, and he said it twice when he was talking to the the tower douchebag guy well the tower oh, when he checks in yeah. Yeah. okay yeah, yeah yeah and then uh it, oh three times actually uh well he said it in the cantina He's he like, says it in the cantina wh- half an hour you Meet know. me at 305. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure it was it was 305. So 305. You, you know, once again, Mando, come on. Lock up your ship. Yeah. Dude, okay. he keeps his gangplank. Can we please down get a lock the on whole that time. ship every Why? episode? Dude, I had a Viper 
lock system on my Civic. <laughs> and this dude has a, a, a starship that is worth way more than... And he leaves the door open, Baby Yoda unattended. There I'm are, tired of it. There are way too many fobs I in this galaxy. I can't believe someone walked on my ship with my open door. Uh, it's Chubbs like ridiculous. jumping down from a ladder like he's Jack Nicholson yeah. Joker. Old man Carl. You know. Yeah. It's interesting, though, because in every episode... Gosh, since... Iota saves him in front of the cave of the Megahorn or whatever the heck thing he's called. Mudhorn. Baseball Mudhorn. Horns. Every episode. What is that? Was that episode two? Yep. Chapter two? Oh, yeah. That, oh, the Rhino. Two. So Deal. we are now on chapter five. Think about this, guys. How many times have we expected Baby Yoda, Iota, to save him? Every single episode. Honestly, I'm When hope- he was walking down that gangplay, <coughs> gangplank. Plank. Gang I, plank. I was totally Gang expecting plank. Baby Yoda to do something. And you See, know what? That's that's really good storytelling. I'm the opposite, it's... though. I'm hoping every time that they're not going to like pull this trope of Baby Yoda using the Force. Right. So I'm they. The, I'm the hope. I'm like hoping he's like, don't do it, don't do it. I don't want to see it until it's like the perfect moment, just like that. Right. That whole. That's first what scene I was, was gonna. Tr- that's what I was saying is master storytelling. You know, even with. Dave Filoni being the writer director here, John Favreau is trying to sound like the look, we cannot overuse Baby Yoda. You know, it's gonna be one, maybe two times a season that he's gonna save the day, and it's it's just master storytelling. And once again, Toro Lawnmower has a gun to our baby Yoda. Stop! Okay? Stop think making me think that something's gonna happen to Baby Yoda. I'm tired of it. Kirsten okay? can't take it. I, I can't tell. Did he it. have a gun to Baby Yoda or the woman? I don't know. It was close enough. I don't need a blaster anywhere near my baby boy. <laughs> okay. Leave it away. Pack it away. I'm over it. Okay. Stop. You're not going to kill him. Okay. We've already confirmed a Baby Yoda's in season two. You can rest easy. The heartbeat is now lowered. Okay. Armando comes up with a plan. He pulls out the same trick that he already showed uh, Toro Lawn Mower. That he was going to use a flash to <laughs> mm-hmm. blind him and then... Strangers it, with Candy says, oh, you're smarter than you look. Exactly. She does. She comes up behind him to put his cuffs on. She says exactly what Justin just said. He then releases the flash. This allows him to get behind our Toro lawnmower and shoot what apparently is a killing blow on Toro. And Once Baby Yoda. Side shot right in the spleen. Nowhere to be found. Baby Yoda missing again. I didn't pick on this pick up on this the first time I watched this or the second time Connor the where did he go how was that was that a display of he had him in his hand force run or force speed, speed. force <laughs> speed who talking about baby Yoda right yeah, now? yeah baby Yoda he just because he shoots it. him and he falls to the ground and then he walks over and he's not there. they were looking around they made a big know. point of showing that like where really do they go and anyone. then Mando was like where do they go but he's okay don't worry he comes out from behind some crates. Mama Mechanic picks him up again, and Baby Yoda is perfectly fine. Armando flies away, and our last scene is a person walking up to what appears to be our dead body of Finnick. Yeah, we definitely had some spurs there. Yeah, so we've only seen spurs on one other person. One person. And that is Armando. So we all have, I think, similar and different opinions. Miguel, what do you think the last person walking up on Finnick was? I have no clue. No? <laughs> no idea. I have Chubbs. no idea. <laughs> Could be Chubbs. Chubbs for you. Russell the, thinks it's Chubbs. I think the cape, I think the cape does match Chubbs. We could be identifying, I mean, my thought was another Mandalorian, but based on what we've seen, the Mandalorians are only there to help uh, our, Boba. our Mando. <laughs> Don't you play with my heartstrings. I, so I had the kind of the same thought process as Connor. The cape did not look the same as our boys. No, the shin armor. The didn't match armor did starter. not match yeah, the boy. No, it's so definitely not. It's got to be somebody else. If it's somebody that's got the same vibe, if they're trying to do like that spur sound effects, the only two options are either it's another Mandalorian or it's Chubbs. Boba. Well, like it, that's it. It could be a bounty hunter. Like no, not with that sound effect. It's got to be a Mando or it's got to be Chubbs. Uh, Russell does not necessarily agree. No, I, I, it's not like I don't agree. I mean, the whole point of this, and again, I've said this every podcast, I, I feel like John Favreau is a master mm-hmm. at creating suspense, um, expectation, the word I'm looking for here, 
Can't storytelling. Like he, yeah, he's a master he of storytelling. It doesn't so need to happen all There at was once. a point in him just showing the bottom you know, three quarters of this of this person's And I think that legs. sound effect is a massive part of his uh-huh. storytelling, though. So it leaves us with the cliffhanger. I'm like, oh, can't wait for next week. Which we have not had. Oh, one more point. How many bodies are there in Beggar's Canyon? <laughs> is this where you just drop a dead body, well, apparently? It's where we apparently shoot womp wings. rats out of T-16s. I know that much. You gotta yeah. feed those womp rats. With dead bodies. Apparently. So that brings us to the end of our episode, and it brings us to the part that everybody's been waiting for. Now we get to the part where we tell an embarrassing story. Cue the music. We tried to make Miss Piggy. We tried to make Miss Piggy, Miggy Piggy, give an embarrassing story. He was having trouble finding an embarrassing story, but we did find one story that me and him at least have in common, and I think that was the story he was going to tell. Well, so if you know me, I have a lot of embarrassing stories, but since I was here, I figured I'd pull one out of the vault that Connor can relate to. (laughs) It's around the time when he was moving in. I don't know exactly. Moving into where? Moving into this house? Into his house, yeah, this house right here. I don't know how it happened, but he has a cat. His name is Chief, and it's a blue Russian. He he loves the cat. He's a fat cat. And one thing about Connor, if you know cat. him, is he's a great cat. He likes to be right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and he prides himself on um, knees know, down. Knowing knees things. down is not cool until proven otherwise. But one thing he does not know more. More about me. Don't you ever say that I don't know more he, about he cats than He thinks he you. knows about cats more than I do. Oh. Okay? I've had cats growing up. I have, I've had so many. Anyways, Miguel, we're moving. Cat king of <laughs> the room. <laughs> AKA <take> Black Panther. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we're moving. I don't know how it happened, but I open the door and Chief goes running out. And Connor loves this cat. Hang on. Let me preference this with you not just opening the door casually. Miguel likes to open a door and leave it open <laughs> and proceeds to stand in said threshold. Like a heathen. And, com- and proceed to have a five minute conversation. That's what Miguel likes to do. Okay. You were not prefacing the story. So after five minute conversation. So the cat. <laughs> so the cat goes out of the door. Connor gets really mad, saying, "Oh my God, my I cat's just never coming in. back." <laughs> Hold on, <laughs> my cat, my cat is gonna get stolen. It's a blue, blue Russian. I don't know. He, it's true. He, he was going like straight up. I was not. He, I was he, very upset. He was really upset. Blue and me, cats are... and me being the cat expert that I am, I told, I told Connor, I'm like, "Hey, listen, dude, like he's gonna come back. I promise you. Listen, you're, don't even worry about it." <laughs> I don't know okay. about you guys, but don't I, even worry I, about it. I room. What kind of forever? I roam the streets of neighborhoods looking for cats to steal. <laughs> so it's his, so I, I'll give him that. It is a blue Russian. It's a really nice looking cat. Black Widow's Russian too. <laughs> you don't see people stealing her. <laughs> so we get in there. He's kind of upset. And so what happens immediately after is I'm in the backyard. His mom was helping him move too. <laughs> and they have a dog named Smee. And so Sweet. his mom, Tana, Hook tells reference. me to yeah. look after the dog <laughs> in the backyard. And literally, not even one minute later, the dog sees his mom walking out of the backyard and just bolts right after her. <laughs> and so this had just happened after I lost the cat. And Miguel's the, 0 for 2. And oh. I'm 0 for 2. The dog goes running out to the street. And I won't forget what Tana said. She said, Man, Miguel, you really suck at watching animals. <laughs> so that made me feel like garbage. <laughs> but the dog is all right. Anyways, later on that night, I, I, so I think I texted Taj, Connor's wife, asking if um, if it, if uh, Chief had come back home, and sure enough, he had come back home. Connor so still hate me. He came. Okay, but he, that, he that's, came back. He, like I listen, told we, you, you'd come back. We gotta have more context. <laughs> I had just moved in, mm-hmm. and Chief was used to going outside when I lived at home with my parents and you hear stories about cats going out. They don't know where they're at. They're stressed Mm -hmm. about the move. You know, they're, they have anxiety, you know, they, they they run out and they don't come back, you know? So Mm -hmm. yeah, I, you know, I was worried. I love that. All I know is I know more about cats than Connor. Okay. 
I can tell by your behavior you know more. <laughs> How many hearts do cats have? Seriously, it's a good question. How many hearts do they have? Zero. They're heartless. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> good answer. Yeah. Hey, you got two. You cats. want a heart? Get a dog. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that was this week's episode of Gunslinger. The worst and, episode. Uh, we, yeah, we had some news, and we were this was this was all combobulated, but. We appreciate you sticking with us. I think it was discombobulated. Discombobulated. It was all sorts of One things. Of those it, it was Caddy Wampus. Once again, I am your host, It's ConCon, followed by our media producer, NRPR, which is. I am may or may not. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Stop with all the different names. You Justin can, Baker. I'm going to have to introduce you now. You it's just going to be. Me on ICQ as. <laughs> MySpace. Please hit him up on MySpace. <laughs> also. Russell Allen, aka Majest Straight, and thank you for Men our straight. guest this this week. Miggy Magistrate. Piggy slash Fluff Computer Generated. All right, guys, we will see you next week. Sorry. We found out that the the race of this that the of these invaders are called. Clatoonians. 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 Uh, yeah, that's K L A T O O N I N S. Jokes. Clatoonians. The trick of the Stop trade there is turn on the subtitles. You can find all these little tidbits out. <laughs> all I know is I was waiting for somebody to break into song. Let's get down to business to defeat. Let's get down to business to defeat the Clatoons. You're the saddest group of krill farmers, so come on, pack up your food. Mr. I'll make a man go out of you. Solid. Nope. All right. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I thank will you. be yeah. cutting this out in post. Listen, and I've been adding music trying to, to do that all day. Can we please? Day. I mean, are you going to sing that a cappella? Are we going to add music in post? Oh, no, we're going to have to add music. Yeah. <laughs>